Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday. This is episode 38 on October 27th and today we're going to be talking about automating tasks using Microsoft Flow. We're going to change things up a little bit this week um, as I've been busy at the Integrate Summit in Redmond, Washington. And what I've done this past week is I had the opportunity to record a session for a community conference called MVP Days. So what I've done is I've actually included the video from that presentation here, and you can go ahead and watch that. And next week, Steph Jan will pick this up, and I'm pretty sure he'll have some content about Integrate and perhaps a bit of a recap. So I hope you enjoy this content. Hello and welcome to MVP Days. My name is Kent Weir. I'm a Principal Program Manager on the Microsoft Flow team at Microsoft. And today I'll be talking to you about Microsoft Flow. Now you might be wondering, how is someone from Microsoft speaking at MVP days? And the truth is I used to be an MVP. I just recently joined Microsoft this past month and Dave was kind enough to allow me to continue to speak. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. When I was an MVP, I was very much focused on integration. I'm um, having spent a lot of time as a BizTalk, Azure, and Azure Integration MVP, where I was focused on Microsoft integration platforms and services, including Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, and Azure API Management, to name a few. I am a published author. I've published three system integration books, I am a blogger. You can find my blog at middlewareinthecloud.com. I have tried video blogging this past year, and you can find those by doing a web search for Middleware Friday or going onto Twitter and doing a search for that particular hashtag. And speaking of Twitter, you can also find myself um, at the handle of at Weirzy. So let's go over the agenda for today. I've got an action-packed 30 minutes for you, so let's get right into it. We're going to talk about what is Microsoft Flow and what are some of the out-of-the-box capabilities for Microsoft Flow. We're also going to try to make this a very demo-intensive session, so I've got plenty of demos for you. And then we're going to move on to some enterprise readiness and governance capabilities inside of Microsoft Flow. And lastly, how does a person get a hold of Microsoft Flow? You might be very surprised at how easy it really is. All right, so let's jump into this. What is Microsoft Flow and how can it help me? So Microsoft Flow helps non-developers work smarter by automating workflow across different services. So these services can include notification services, file-based web services such as Dropbox, OneDrive for Business, OneDrive, and Box. It also has the ability to collect data through a variety of out-of-the-box connectors that allow you to consume this data, whether it be on a polling interval or event-driven model. And last but not least, certainly the ability to automate approvals is one of the core capabilities of Microsoft Flow. So what makes up a flow? Well, there's really two core components. Uh, the first being a trigger, which is an event that kicks off the flow. Now, sometimes this can be a manual execution of the flow through a button, and we'll talk a little bit about buttons later, they're very cool, it can be something that's on a schedule. So we can set up a recurrent schedule that every, say, hour or every day, the workflow will go ahead and kick off and then run your prescribed set of steps, steps or actions. Or it could also be an event in the cloud. A record could get created in, say, a SharePoint list, and as a result, Microsoft Flow will get notified of that event and then go ahead and process that event. Next up, we have actions, and an action is what the flow is going to do with the data that has been retrieved from previous steps. So, for example, if we have a trigger that receives an order, we can go ahead and compose an action that will use the data from the order and, say, populate downstream systems. Now, as part of Microsoft Flow, there's over 170 out-of-the-box connectors to many popular services. These services can be SaaS-based services inside or outside of the Microsoft ecosystem and can also be on-premises services uh, using a on-premise data gateway. Now, this is a pretty important and cool feature of Microsoft Flow, and that's templates. So templates really are patterns that have been developed by either Microsoft or the community and then are there shared as part of a library. 
So you can look at these templates as really accelerators that provide you with a very quick access to a solution. And really what it allows you to do is just really focused on providing some credentials and connectivity details and the workflow itself will be provisioned for you automatically. You can certainly go ahead and tweak and uh, modify these templates to, to suit your needs, but these really act as a great starting point for you to get started. Uh, as I mentioned, like these can be provided by Microsoft or by the community, and you do have the ability to submit a template for review by the Microsoft Flow product team, and you will get attribution uh, for your contributions as well. So demo, let's, let's get right into this. And we're gonna do just a very simple email notification. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna see these templates in action. And this particular template, we want to get a push notification when an email comes in from a very important customer or someone else could be someone else in your organization as well. I know previously, I'm sure you feel like many other people in the sense that you probably feel you get enough email and there's certainly no shortage of emails. And if you actually turned on your email notifications inside of your Outlook app on your mobile device, you'd probably be very distracted all day long and not get anything done. So this is an, an opportunity for you to disable those notifications on your phone, but allow you not to miss any important emails that you get. There's an also another template which will provide similar functionality when you get an email from your boss. But uh, let's go ahead and see this in action, and you can see exactly how this template is used and how quick you can actually go ahead and provision a Microsoft Flow. So I've logged into flow.microsoft.com and what I can do is I can go ahead and search from within this text box right here, find a template or connector to start with. You can also click on one of these other icons and look at the templates related to those specific services. But I'm just gonna also click on templates here. This is similar to the screenshot that you saw before. And these would be all of the flows sorted by popularity. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we're gonna see the template that we're interested in. Get a push notification when you get an email from a VIP. So let's go ahead and click on this. Now what it's gonna go ahead and do is inspect what are the connectors that this template uses and do I have any connections for those specific connectors already created? And if so, I have the ability to reuse them. I don't have to though, I can go ahead and add new connections if I really wish, but in this case, both of these connectors and the related connections are gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue. And now we see that the template has loaded. We've got a default name. We can go in and modify the template itself. So in this case, these are all essentially filters that we can filter on. Um, so for example, if we are interested in, you know, the in a specific VIP customer, we can go ahead and put their email. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my Hotmail account in here. I'll be the VIP for this specific demo. I'm also going to set the importance to high. So what this means is that when a new email reaches my inbox, in this case, my Office 365 inbox, it's gonna take a look to see who it's from and if it's from this email address. And if the importance is high, then that is going to trigger the rest of this workflow. Now we also have some additional properties that we could set, like if there was an attachment or other subject filters that we wanna use in order to eliminate or reduce the amount of times that this notification will get set. So I can go ahead and collapse the trigger. So that would be the inbound trigger. And then we're gonna configure the outbound action. Now, in this case, we have the ability to modify any of the data that we're gonna see in the push notification. And this is where flow gets really interesting. By clicking on this text box, now we see all of this dynamic content that's available. Now these are all essentially property from the email that was just received. So if we wanna also include who it was from, we can go ahead and click on from, and just like that, we'll see as part of our push notification, both the subject and who actually went ahead and sent it. So let's just go ahead and create flow. Okay, I have this already provisioned. So let's just go ahead and provide, just, we'll just modify the title. We'll go ahead and click on create flow. So that's it, that's done. 
Now I'm going to go into Hotmail and go ahead and construct an email. So you can imagine that if you're receiving an email from a customer and they have some sort of an outage and it's set to high priority, that's probably an email that you want to be notified about and not something that uh, you will just respond to at your convenience. Now, what I'm going to do now is open up AirWatch. And there you go. You can see that we have an email from a VIP customer. And we can actually go into the Flow mobile application. And this is where we would go ahead and see our approvals. But we can also go ahead and see our notifications as well. And here's the notification that we just received. So hopefully that gives you a sense of what Flow is capable of and the time it takes to build out some of these simple workflows. Now, I do will caution that we're just scratching the surface here. We got some more demos coming up with a little bit more complexity, uh, but I just wanted to get you sort of the hello world of Microsoft Flow. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna create another flow from scratch, at least the shell of it from scratch, just to give you a sense of the maker experience. And what we will do is I have a finished, more polished flow as a result of this scenario that we'll, we'll see execute. Now, this is a, a use case from a previous place where I used to work. And this organization has a trade floor where they trade commodities. And there was one group in particular uh, one desk that was looking at Microsoft Teams and they were looking for a way to reduce the amount of email that was being sent amongst the team and wanted a more thread-based application. So keep in mind this organization already had instant messaging through Skype for business, but they wanted something with a little bit less noise and would give people the ability to consume this data when it was convenient for them. So this group started to use Microsoft Teams and they're really happy with it. But then they wanted to know, well, like, is it possible to go and get more data and bring more data to Microsoft Teams so they don't always have to go fetch it? And certainly if you're trading commodities, one thing that is always of interest to you, to you is the weather. So you think about it in the summer, if it's really hot, chances are power prices are going up. You think about it in the winter, if it gets really cold, especially in Canada, power prices are probably going up because the demand is going up. So these are some things that you always want to be mindful of as you're trading in these markets is the weather and usually whether or not there's a storm or a heat wave coming. So the scenario here is that we're going to, on a schedule, instantiate this workflow that's going to go ahead and get weather data and then publish it into a Microsoft team and more specifically a channel within a Microsoft team. So as an aside note, um, I should be, as this is recorded, I should be watching this live with you all. So if you do, do have questions, uh, please post them um, on Twitter. and. Um, I will do my best to give you an immediate answer. And if not, I can certainly follow up with you. And once again, that hashtag is at Weirzy. So here I am, float at Microsoft.com. I'm going to create from blank this time. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, a brand new workflow and without any sort of pre-configured template. And it's really up to you. Um, if, Like I said, if there's patterns that you have, um, that help you be more productive, by all means, go ahead and use them. If not, you can always go ahead and start from blank. So the first thing we're gonna do is use a schedule. And really this is almost like a timer job where we have the ability to choose the interval 
and the frequency, second, minute, hour, day, week, month. Now do note that there is some limitations here with respect to your licensing SKU. If you're on the free tier, you're not gonna be pulling um, in such short durations. Uh, we can also take a look at some of the more advanced features and say what time zone is this in, which is always nice if you're dealing with uh, daylight savings time and also a start time if you wish. So for the purpose of this, we're gonna leave it at one minute. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is add an action. So the recurrence is our trigger. Now we need an action. So what we can go ahead is type for weather. And in this case, there's an MSN weather API. Now there's three different operations that we can call, get the current weather, get the forecast for today, or get the forecast for tomorrow. So we can go ahead and say, get current weather. And let's just go ahead and say Seattle. And then we also have the choice of imperial or metric, depending upon um, if you're in the US or anywhere else in the world. But um, for this purpose, we'll go ahead and just use imperial. Now we can also go ahead and add another weather. And so this is the current weather. If we wanna go ahead and check out what is the forecast for tomorrow, we can go ahead and do the same thing. And we're gonna leave that as imperial. Next up, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll now search for, for Microsoft Teams. And we go ahead and do that. We have four different operations that we can go ahead and call. So create a channel, list channels, list teams, or post message. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and post a message. Now, here's where the connections come into play here. So like, certainly I would have my Microsoft.com connections, but I also have my own tenant, which is what I want in this case. I want to use this weirzy dot on microsoft.com. So what it's going to go ahead and do is connect in using those credentials, and it's going to go ahead and see the two different teams that, that exist. So we're going to go ahead and, and check on Energy Trading East Desk. I can go ahead and choose my channel, natural gas, and then I can go ahead and construct the body of the message. Now what I have the ability to do is to use that dynamic content that we showed before. Now what's pretty cool is that I can now essentially aggregate this data set. So I've got data coming back from the get forecast for tomorrow, but I also have it for the current weather. And now I can go ahead and add things like the location, the current temperature, you know, what the wind is. Um, there's also what is going to be the high, what is going to be the low. Now, I'm gonna flip over to one that I've completed constructing in part due to that we can actually improve the markup of all of these different data attributes by using some simple HTML. So I'm just gonna close this, I'm not gonna save it. And then we'll pop over to one that actually is complete. Now in this case, we're checking every, uh, let's see, well, it's every 60 minutes, but um, we can change it for every 10 minutes. And here I'm getting the data for Los Angeles. If I come down to the teams, I can go ahead and wrap this and say the current weather in Los Angeles is this temperature, then have a line break, and then today's high is the high and the low is the low. For, and then also talk about tomorrow's high and tomorrow's low. Now this will go ahead and run, like it's gonna run automatically. And if we launch teams, we can go ahead and see the actual data that's come in. So it was set to every 60 minutes. So this has been running all day long and we can see the, you know, what the weather was like in Los Angeles and how it's changed throughout the day. It was 79, then 76, 74, 71. And yet the high remained consistent as you would expect. So this is one way where you can go ahead and enrich your team's experience. And as you can see that that wasn't a very complicated workflow to go ahead and build. So when you talk about Microsoft Flow and this idea of non-developers building low-code, no-code solutions, you can actually build some pretty interesting things by using Flow and some of these connectors. Another thing that we've done in the past, too, was use the Twitter connector and sentiment analysis API and actually go ahead and look for tweets that were pertaining to energy trading run the sentiment, do some additional analysis against that data stream, 
and then publish the ones that were of interest into the Microsoft team. Once again, allowing users to focus on this idea of like a single pane of glass, where they don't actually have to always be distracted and going out to all of these different systems. The data can now come to the end user instead of the end user chasing the data. So hopefully that was another example that was useful for you and gives you some ideas of how you can actually bring other data sets into your Microsoft Teams using Microsoft Flow and the Recurrence Connector. Now, next up, we're gonna build a more advanced scenario, and this is related to employee onboarding scenarios and access management. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna move through the first two parts of this demo rather quickly in order to show the third, which is the most interesting um, because we do have a fixed time for this session. So we wanna talk about onboarding scenarios and more specifically access management. So you can imagine a situation where someone needs an Azure AD group to be created. And it always happens and it's a really frustrating scenario in a lot of businesses because there's these crazy long processes and red tape in order to do something so simple. So we have the ability using Microsoft Forms, the Microsoft Forms connector for Microsoft Flow to actually retrieve some simple data elements from a Microsoft Form and go ahead and create that group inside of Active Directory. So this is a very simple thing to do inside of Microsoft Flow. And here, let me just show you what this would look like inside of the actual designer. So here we have the Flow. Uh, we have the Microsoft Form connector. And what we do is we go ahead and establish a connection to the Microsoft Form. Then what happens is we go ahead and retrieve the response by passing in the response ID from the trigger itself. And then we would have the ability to pull in information from the actual Microsoft form and then use the create group operation as part of the Azure Active Directory connector to go ahead and create that Azure AD group. Now this is something fairly simple to do inside of Microsoft Flow but there's gonna be a challenge. I'm sure there's a, a few of you, especially if you've worked in ITIL heavy shops that says, wait a minute, you can't go ahead and do that. You can't go ahead and just create an Azure AD group without an approval. So now we have the ability to layer on approvals using Microsoft Flow. And it's actually not very difficult to go ahead and do. So let me just, in the interest of time, once again, I wish I could spend more time going into the details, but we are constrained. So I'm gonna go back into what we were calling part two of this scenario, where we can actually see the approval and we will see it in action in the next demo. So just hang tight. So here we are in back in Microsoft Flow. So this is an actual different flow, but the initial Microsoft Forms operations are exactly the same. What we can do though, is we can actually inject an approval prior to dealing with Azure Active Directory. So we go ahead and we drag an approval action onto our workflow. Then what we need to do is to provide the approval type, whether or not it's one person from the list or everyone from an assigned list that has to go ahead and approve this. Now, we would also wanna provide a title for that, for that approval. And we can go ahead and use this dynamic content from our actual Microsoft form that was submitted. We need to provide an assigned to, and this needs to be someone from within your organization, from within your Office 365 tenants. We also can provide some additional details around a description. So what actually happens is an email notification goes out to the assigned to person. They'll get the, a link. They'll have the opportunity to accept or reject that approval. And in the event that it is approved, we'll go ahead and create that group. And then we'll also provide an email indicating whether that it was approved and the group has been created. If it's not approved, then what will happen is the an email will get sent out saying that it has been rejected. So once again, in the interest of time, we're just gonna move on to the third demo where we'll see this all in action because there's still a piece missing. Once again, if you're in a, an ITIL or certainly a SOX environment, you're also bound to deal with audit. 
I'm pretty sure that your internal audit and external audit organizations are not going to be super pumped that you're creating different Azure Active Directory entities without some sort of an audit trail. So now we have the ability to use another SaaS connector as part of this Microsoft Flow platform, which is ServiceNow. And we can go ahead and use the ServiceNow connector to create a request and actually perform the action in Azure Active Directory and then go ahead and close that request. So let's actually go ahead and we'll see this in action. You'll see all of these other components that we just talked about as well in this, this one demo. So here we go, we're inside of Microsoft Forms, which is now part of the core Office 365 offering. So let's go ahead and create a display name for this Azure AD group. We'll just call it MVP Days uh, Group for MVP Days Members. Uh, the male nickname, we'll just call it MVP Days. And the type, is this an, a unified group? or is this just a security group? Uh, we'll make it a unified group. And now what we'll go do is we'll go ahead and click on submit. Now what'll happen after this is we'll actually get an email notification requesting us to approve this specific Azure AD group request. So here's the approval request that's hit my inbox. Now I'm gonna go ahead and approve this request. And what's actually happening is it's taken me over to the approval center inside of the Microsoft Flow Maker Portal. So this is underneath this approvals tab here. I can see that I've got one approval waiting for me. I can go ahead and say sounds good and click on confirm. Once I've gone ahead and done that, the rest of the workflow is able to go ahead and continue. So let's just go take a quick look at that. And we can see the workflow step by step. Um, we were able to get the details for the MVP days group. We started the approval. We can see that the response was approved. We've got a condition that's going to check that. Now we can go ahead and create the request inside of ServiceNow. So we're basically documenting that we were going to go ahead and do this with Azure AD. We've included who the approver was, what the group that was being created called MVP days, and who actually requested it. So we go ahead and create the request, then we go ahead and create the group, and then we'll go ahead and actually update the record inside of ServiceNow, indicating that it's now been closed. So we're now in ServiceNow, which is really an IT service management tool or now what they're starting to call it is an actual enterprise service management tool. So here was the actual request that we had created. We'll see that the group is MVP days. It was approved by Kent Weir and Kent Weir from a different tenant was the one that actually requested it. Uh, we can also see that it has been closed and is complete and that has an approval status of approved. So now we're good from a, a SOX perspective. Uh, we haven't broken any policies or rules inside of the organization, but yet we've enabled a lot of productivity because we've now provided a low friction way to get groups done. And this one just focused on Azure AD groups. Through the AD Connect, there's a lot of other operations that you can call upon in order to create different objects. Flow Analytics is something that we're investing in. We're gonna give people more insight into what and how well their flows are performing. You can collaborate with your coworkers. So you have the ability to share flows because there's always that concern, well, what if someone leaves the organization? You're covered by allowing co-authoring and co-ownership. Buttons are another opportunity where you can actually execute different tasks and workflows from your mobile device just by clicking on a button. Now, what if you're an admin or a developer, some advanced scenarios? So certainly we have admin center where we have data loss protection, where you can restrict which connectors can be used inside of your environment. You can also create multiple environments. So you have a, a non-prod and a prod. You have the ability to do that as well using Microsoft Flow. We also provide you with the ability to create a custom connector in the event that we don't have a connector 
for the system. Maybe it's a customized system um, inside of your organization. Microsoft Flow is designed for citizen developers. And for the pro devs, we do have Azure Logic Apps, which shares a lot of the same feature sets and connectors. And you have the ability to export your Microsoft Flow and have it imported inside of Azure Logic Apps, where you would manage it through the Azure portal and all of the great tooling that supports Azure and pro development. So how do you get Flow? Uh, the most common way is actually through Office 365. So if you are in Office 365, with most of the SKUs, you will actually have the ability, some, you'll actually have some entitlement. So I'd go ahead and check on that, go to portal.office.com, click on the waffle, and then look for the flow icon. So I'll leave you with some helpful links. Certainly reach out to me if you have any additional questions, comments, and feedback about what you just saw. Thanks again, and have a great day.